Okay, well, let's dive into actually converting some libraries. Um, the first library that I want to convert is one of my own. It's a library called Ether. It's a bunch of radio-type sound effects that I've had up for sale for a number of years. And uh, I haven't yet gotten around to converting this, so I haven't done any of this work yet. It's going to be completely done live. And uh, let's see what we can do. So I have here a uh, blank SoundMiner document. Again, we're going to work in SoundMiner using the workflows that we've just been talking about. And I'm going to drag this library in from the Finder and just drop it on this database. And it's not a particularly big library, 119 sounds. And this is the metadata that exists right now for this library. This is how I've been selling it. This is the embedded metadata. So what we want to do is take a little time here, and we're going to change this into a UCS compliant library. We're going to assign it to a new category using the new cat ID system. We're going to then ultimately build a new file name at the end. So the first thing I want to do is just look, have a look at what metadata I have. So have effects names. They're fine. I'm pretty happy with those, I think. I might just make a little change to some of them, but probably they're okay. I see that the category, however, is radio effects, which is not a category that's part of the UCS system, but it's close. So the first step will be to basically convert that over. I have the library name is Tim Nielsen Effects, which is wrong. I want to actually give it a name for this actual library, which we'll do. And the designer is here. I might choose to put my name in manufacturer as well. And at the end, we're going to then basically change these file names. So for now, the file names, we're not going to use them. We're just going to let them sit until we're ready to rebuild new ones. But let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to just do is select all. And I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to say Category Full Assign, and I'm going to go to Communications Radio. And so this is the new category that matches in the UCS system, this. And it's going to go through, and it's going to basically assign all of these files to that. It's going to add the cat ID. It's going to add the category, the subcategory. It's going to build, if I pull this out, you can see a Category Full. And that's now just sitting there waiting for us to work with it. Now, I could, if I wanted to, assign something in the vendor category. And I'm going to do that more as an example. I might not choose to actually do this, but f for example, I know that in this library I have some files that were recorded with an EMF microphone. Now, there is actually a category called electricity uh, electromagnetic, and I could assign these particular files to that. But because this is a single library and it's really radio type sounds that I want to keep as a library of radio sounds, I'm going to keep them all assigned to this. But I want to assign, let's say, some of these files to a vendor category called, called EMF to make it clear to anybody who wants to know that, oh, here's some EMF sounds within this library. So I know, for example, that these ones that are labeled EM in my effects name are some of those. So I'm going to select all of these, OK? And I'm going to right click on vendor category, and I'm going to say edit field. And I'm just going to type EMF right here. And I'm going to save that. So again, what I'm doing is I'm shaping the metadata before I build the file name. So uh, I'm just assigning things right into SoundMiner, and I'm doing it by you know editing or right-clicking and hitting edit, or you can just hit E and type something right into these fields as well. Um, and I know that I have another set of files in this library that were recorded with a, a, something called a VC3, which is another electromagnetic recorder. So I'm going to also basically come here and I'm going to edit those, and I'm going to say assign those also to the vendor category EMF. Now, if I wanted to be consistent, I would in theory assign all the other things that are non-EMF to something else. I mean, to be if I wanted to, I could put in here non-EMF or something like that. I'm not going to bother. I'm going. I'm okay having sort of some of them have this vendor category and some not. Um, or I could just type the word general, let's say, or something like that, and then there would be sort of everything would be assigned. But for the purpose of this demonstration, let's just say I just want to mark these, and I want to do this mostly just so that you can see in the file name when it builds it what it's going to do. And I have these effects names, and they're all uppercase. And some people don't like that. Some people want these to be title cased or something else. But that's fine. We can actually make that change when we uh, build the file name. So I'm not going to bother doing anything with that now. But the library, I'm going to change. I'm going to hit select all, and I'm going to hit E to change it. And I'm going to type the nerd ether, because that's the actual name of this library. And under notes, if I wanted to, I could add something else. Uh, for example, I could put copyright. Tim Nielsen or something like that if I wanted to. And I could then choose to append the notes field to the end of the file name if I wanted to. I don't think I'm going to bother. Manufacturer, I don't really work with a manufacturer name for myself, but I could, if I wanted to, also just put myself here. The reason you might want to specify a manufacturer is that in the later video on metadata uploading and matching, you need to have something in the manufacturer field. It doesn't use the designer field. It actually uses only the manufacturer field. So if you're a single person vending sounds like I am without a company name per se, then put yourself listed here as well. Uh, not a bad idea to embed that into the metadata 
and you'll see why again in a little bit later. We're really almost done. Um, one thing I might choose to do here for show is just maybe let's not use uppercase for all that. Um, and if I wanted to, in the metadata, let's say I didn't want the effects name to be title case, well, there's a really easy workflow. I can come here, clear this out, and find the one that says change case, and I'll just title case the effects name, and that will basically just go through and do that. Now you see where it's changed EMF, or EM, which was capitalized to that. If I wanted to, I could come here and do a find and replace in the effects name and change EM to EMF, and I'll just bypass this like we talked about, and I'll run that, and now at least that's back to EMF there. So now I have these effects names like this. I'm happy with these. I might real quickly change VC3 to VC3 because it's actually a model of a recorder sort of thing, so I'll just quickly change that. And that quickly, I've sort of built all the fields that I need to now build the UCS file names. So let's go ahead and come back to the workflows. Let's clear all we have, and let's go down here to UCS build, and um, I'm not going to include the user category because I don't have anything in the user category because I'm a vendor in this case. I wouldn't be encouraged to use this. This is really designed for users on their own system. But I do have stuff in vendor category, so I'm going to include that as it is. Now, it's all capitals, and I want to leave it that way. I could change the case of the vendor thing. If I had put something lowercase here, uh, for example, if I put all lowercase EMF, I could go ahead and tell it to... Uh, uppercase that you know and so you can solve some problems here by changing the case but let's leave it as is because it's fine the effects name as is I've already done the title casing of it so I don't need to do that but if I had this all uppercase I could come in here and title case it here I can also if I wanted to title case it and then remove the spaces now this is how I work in my personal library I actually like to keep the file name as short as possible so I don't mind having the spaces removed. I still find it readable for me. Many people don't. So let's just leave it as it is. Then the creator ID, I'm going to choose designer. I could choose manufacturer, but I'm going to choose designer in this case because SoundMiner has this lookup table and it's going to basically find the word Tim Nielsen and then realize that it should use the initials TN in that case. Um, I should, if I was a true vendor, I should be using TN effects, which I can do a find and replace later. That's fine. And then the source ID, I'm going to put uh, library because I wanted to put the word ether in the file name so that everybody knows that these files came from that library. And that's it. This is ready now to build. And what I'll usually do is take one file and I'll just do a quick test and hit run. And you'll see I've built a very simple four-part file name. Com radio, radio deep airy static, TN, ether. So let me undo that. Let me just go here to find and replace real quick and go to find and replace in the file name and let's replace underscore TN with underscore TN effects. But for now, I'll just do a quick change so that when I run this again, it'll just put TN effects for everything. So if I select all, hit run, and you'll see that in this case, it took vendor category EMF and added it in here. And I have just like that built my entire library into UCS file names. Now, what do I want to do with that when I'm ready to basically sell it or whatever? Well, the really useful feature in SoundMiner is the mirror command. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to say, let's mirror these out, which is basically the equivalent of saying, let's make a copy of these. And we can do certain things along the function. If you're not familiar with mirroring, it's very useful. So I'm going to put them all into interleave files, make sure they're interleaved. I could do something like sum them to mono, which is pretty dangerous. I obviously don't want to do that. I'm going to tell it to embed the metadata on the way because I haven't actually embedded this yet. I made all these changes, but I didn't actually just hit the button to embed them yet. So, And then the destination folder, I'm going to say build it using library and then category. Or I could say library, then category, then subcategory. Uh, so let's do that. Always create new. Basically, don't overwrite the file or don't skip the file. If it, if it was a conflict in the file name, it would add an 01, I think, and just keep it so that I don't lose anything. How much CPU I'm going to use. What's the file name scheme? Well, I'm just going to basically use the file name that I've already built. I don't want to make any changes, but here I could actually change the file name in theory. If they're mono files, add a .m, file name limit 255 characters, strip any illegal characters out. So if there were ampersands or I don't know which legal characters that Pro Tools doesn't like in different programs, it'll go ahead and remove those. There's not any, there are no, none of those here. I'm not worried about that. And use the original source sample rate. Don't do a sample rate conversion. I could if I wanted to come in here and basically convert everything to a certain different format if I wanted to, but I want all these to be 2448, which is, I believe, what all of these are. And when I hit OK, it's going to ask me for a location, and I'll just put these in my downloads folder. And what you'll see is that it's going through, and um, it's building a folder, Ether, and within that communications, radio, 
and it's putting all the files in that folder. Nicely organized, using the new file names, embedding all the metadata. And at the end of this, I'm now ready to sell this library. I'm ready to upload this to a new server or do something like that. And when we look again at the ability to upload metadata, uh, I'd be able to say anybody who's purchased this library before, I can, I'll show the steps that they'll be able to basically download this new information without having to re-download these files. We'll get to that at the, in the last video in this tutorial. But there's an example of taking one library and converting it fairly easily using the workflows. And so let's go on and let's check out another one.